<laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Okay. <laughs> is this good? <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining Cuatro Elementos. If I can get everybody's attention. Um, we have James joining us today to talk about how to monetize your podcast. I want to thank uh, the host, Cuatro Elementos, for hosting this wonderful event. And let's get started. Thanks, Thanks Philip. Um, how many of you guys is this your first the first time attending? One. Yeah, everybody else is regular. Awesome. Um, so my name is Joseph uh, Joseph Hacker. I do several different things. I've currently got 28 tech companies, two nonprofits, eight small, nine small businesses, 26 books published on Amazon. I host three podcasts and three digital magazines. How many of you guys are kind of in a transition between uh, what you want to do? How many of you guys have reinvented yourself throughout your career? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. How many of you guys are considering reinventing yourself in the process of, yeah? Okay, so uh, I've done this multiple times, and I'll tell you, uh, podcasting can be part of that recipe. So uh, how many of you guys have a company and you're looking to get more like uh, marketing reach using possibly podcasts? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, how many of you guys already have a podcast? Okay. Okay. How are those going? One girl didn't want to pull her weight, and so we all we're on hiatus. We we catch nudge, but it was the the other girl and I. We did everything. I did the booking. She did graphic design. I did, I did graphic design. She did editing. So we all pulled together. But I had a vision because I, I have done this before with a, a live show, a live streaming show, and I wanted to take it, produce it, and monetize it, and grow it. And with the third girl, she was just imploding and didn't want to go in that direction. She was doing it for shits and giggles. And a lot of podcasts do. Um, is your podcast monetized? No? Okay. So uh, in 2017, I went on a rant on Facebook. Uh, I was sitting in my hotel room. Uh, There's a longer backstory, but uh, I posted on Facebook that tomorrow morning, I'm going to go live on Facebook, and the topic was, fuck the trends. So I go on, and I, I've got maybe 1,200 followers on Facebook. I ended up with 2,200 people watching me live. So the little number in the top was 2.2 K. At day, within 24 hours, over 30,000 people watched that live video. Uh, now, uh, six weeks later, I brought on my HGTV uh, celebrity co-host. HGTV is the queen of bling, Donna Moss. Uh, in week nine, I hosted the top design industry podcasters on my show. And we cleared 100,000 views in one week. By December of 2017, we were getting calls from publicists saying, can we book our celebrities on your show? So I've had uh, the, the Property Brothers, HGTVs, the Property Brothers uh, on my show. First time I had them on, we lip sync battled. I've had Collective Soul play live on the show. I've had the um, uh, second Aunt Viv from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air on the show. So like a, a bunch of crazy celebrities and in year one, in 2018, I made $180,000. Now, uh, along the way, I learned, uh, you know what? One of my sponsors was like, hey, Joe, you only do the one show. Uh, you know, would you do more? And I said, hey, would you pay me more? And he said, well, no. And I said, well, no. Uh, so I got into producing shows. So uh, in 2019, I started producing A Student's Perspective, uh, Jennifer Farrell's Design Hot Seat, Angie Everhart's Live with Angie Everhart. Um, we had Unapologetic with uh, Camille Cower. I hired six sales reps in Las Vegas selling uh, advertisement and sponsorship on these podcasts, and they broke me. Uh, we, it, it, 
hi, hi, paying those sales reps, I got it wrong. I thought that the value of podcasting was those advertisements. And I thought it was also the network. Kind of the network selling advertising. What I discovered about podcasting and, and uh, my series two of Design Talk Live, in less than two months, I made $93,000. I don't actually sell a podcast anymore. How many of you guys think that selling podcasts is about downloads? Downloads? Are you guys counting your downloads for podcasts? So it's, it's not. Uh, if you think about it from a logical standpoint, uh, how many times do you download a podcast? Uh, in the States, you just kind of listen to podcasts. It, you download a podcast if you're going to board a plane and you're not going to have Wi-Fi signal. That's when you download a podcast. But that's what we're told as a metric for podcast success is followers and downloads. I don't do any of that. In fact, now on my season two of the podcast, I had not even recorded an episode until I got fully paid by all my sponsors. And then I recorded the episodes, and then we released them. Now, the trick to podcasting is your entertainment. So with uh, what I do with my podcast as part of my bundles is that uh, we ensure that we're going to have one on-site, in-person podcast at your venue. So we only target, let's say I wanted to, um, let's say I wanted to get into the wine industry. I've got no no background in the wine industry. I could go on ChatGPT, have it write a book for me about uh, why California wine is dead on the vine. I don't know that it is or it isn't. Slightly controversial. Uh, it might raise a few hairs for a few people. Uh, I've got a now, now I've got a book. There's my book, The Dead on the Vine uh, po uh, Book. And I put out a podcast and I start marketing to venues. Restaurants that want to have people at their venue, uh, wineries that want to have people at their venue, bottling companies, whatever. Just the companies that inherently want to be able to reach out to their existing customers and say, hey, come on out because we're going to be hosting a live, in-person podcast and we're going to have some authority, some influencer in the wine space here at the venue. So the brands want to bring the audience. I'm basically, and podcasting, for me, if you want to monetize it, is entertainment. I'm the DJ. I'm the DJ who has access to influencers in your space. And that's how I host the podcast. Uh, now, we still do the podcast. You can find my uh, Design Talk Live podcast on Spotify. I've got um, uh, Joining Crowd Business podcast on Spotify, and then I even white label podcasts for other businesses. So we've got uh, Tice, the Tice Talks. So that's just an entire podcast that uh, they just pay us to produce. Uh, but the trick to it is, for monetizing, is that I know that I'm not going for downloads. It's not about my bestie and how, how great we are and we vibe really well. Uh, for monetizing the podcast, I monetize the podcast before we even record. And that's something that's really hard. Now, I speak at PodCon, uh, uh, PodCon Podcast Movement, PodFest in San Diego, and this is tough uh, for podcasters. Podcasters are like, oh no, I do podcasting <laughs> uh, because I love the space that I talk in. And you're like, uh, or when you ask podcasters, how do you monetize your podcast? They're like, oh, Go get a job. And I'm like, no, that's not true. Uh, how many of you guys karaoke? How many of you guys are afraid to karaoke? I'm like afraid to get up there. I will botch that. You know what? There's a certain, um, uh, I respect the person that's able to get up there and sing on the mic. I think that's amazing. I think that, you, the, the, that you're able to just get up there and give it a go. And sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. The fact that you're able to get up there is valuable. With podcasting, the fact that you're willing to take up a microphone and address a niche audience, that's valuable. What does the customer want? What does the person who's going to pay you want? Well, in most cases, they want people in their store or their venue. 
that's how I've spun the podcast. So uh, it's a simple roadmap. It's a simple roadmap that says, first, the fact that you're willing to take up a microphone in the first place and host a podcast at all, you're already in the small percentage. Second, you don't actually have to have the podcast. There's no downloads necessary. What you're selling is the in-person podcast. Yeah. And you're giving those brands a reason to call up their audience. So you don't even need an audience for that. A lot of people think that, well, I don't have an audience. Don't even need one. Those brands and those showrooms and those retail outlets and those restaurants and those wineries or those boat whatevers or whatever niche you want to get into, they want to be able to give their email list. Some of us are in here, are marketers. Um, they want to be able to reach out to their audience, to their subscribers, and say, hey, we've got an event going on. And how great is it that because it's a podcast, you have the ability to reach out to influencers in that space and invite them to be at the event. The audience gets to meet those people. This is not just like some event. This is a crazy event. Also, it's recorded. And it's available for you to re-listen to on Spotify and YouTube and Facebook and, and you can cut it up. I use Opus AI to take all my video clips and then convert those into 30 and 60 second clips that I then give to my guest and to the sponsors so that they can use it to market in front of their people with sage advice and, and that celebrity or that influencer power. So. So, I would highly recommend, if you guys are considering go or reinventing yourself, it's so easy to get these going. Uh, currently, right now, and this is the, the restaurant for Elementos is supplying the microphone and the karaoke machine. My equipment, and this is the equipment that I've had Gary Vee on my show, I've had um, uh, David Meltzer, I've had... Um, uh, Tony Robbins on the show and I've been to David Meltzer do you guys know who David Meltzer is the, the inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire so I've been to his studio and I show up with this microphone right here attached to this receiver at cell phone and that little see that little blue light that's my all of this right here is my podcasting equipment so, yeah, it, it, and I've had the lip sync battles with the Property Brothers, and you, it's crazy. So as far as gear goes, you don't need all that. This is literally all purchased on Amazon. So, so if you were considering reinventing yourself, going into a different industry, I would highly suggest creating a book on Amazon. That's a whole different thing if you guys want to talk with me about writing a book on with ChatGPT and getting it published on Amazon, that's a whole different thing. But that gives you that, that thing to point to, that authority. And then the podcast gives you access to a network. And then as far as monetizing, uh, you don't need the downloads. You don't need the audience. It's super easy. You're doing something most people wouldn't do. You're picking up the microphone. And the magic to it is hosting events. So. Any questions? Did I, did I cover? I, I said, um, or if you're considering transitioning, how to monetize, and I forget, we had a third bullet point, but any questions? Um, I read a stat that's like 95 percent of podcasts fail. Why do you think that is? Yeah, so why do 95% why do of podcasts fail? Uh, one, um, they think that I've got some great information that everybody wants, and then I forget that I still got to market it. Second is, I think me and my bestie, we're so funny, and everybody's just going to love us, and uh, nobody gives a shit. Uh, second, also nobody knows. Nobody really knows. So I think in all businesses, people forget about the marketing aspect of it, right? Um, also, what's the value in it? Is it really the knowledge I have? Because I could have a bunch of knowledge and sit on an island all by myself. Um, and then throw in a podcast on Spotify, 
Oh my god, it is like throwing a, a sand onto the beach. Like, it, there's so many podcasts out there. That's not even where it starts. Plus, if if I'm not making money on this, and I'm spending money on it, I'm getting all the equipment, and I'm at some point, uh, some loved one is going to talk me out of doing this podcast, and I'm going to shut this thing down. You're more likely to shut your business down, any business, if it costs you a ton of money and it's not working out, right? I mean, why would you keep that business going? The, the formula that it, it that I came upon, it's not like I, I, um, I mean, I lived it. It was a fluke that, that original, that first live stream on Facebook went as well as it did. Then I failed. I, my, I had a bunch of shows that depended on me and six sales reps selling and I misunderstood the value proposition. The value proposition is that it was important to brands to be able to host events like this. That's why uh, most podcasts never hit monetization and then it becomes hard to keep repeating. Any other, any other questions? Oh. Right back here real quick, and then we'll come over to you. Actually, definitely interesting. The um, key is the influencer, the celeb, the, and not that they're you know top level, not to diminish it, right? But how difficult is it for someone just starting out to get that mid-level celebrity, you know, the, the influencer, you know, who has a bigger following than you do? What is your cost? So, great question. Um, so, strangely enough, a lot of the times the venues have a person. They, they've got a marketing person or they've got like somebody in their area who... Uh, uh, so, I recently teamed up with a, a local venue and there's Rico to the rescue. It lives in Denver. So, that was easy to call him up. Uh, he already lives there. So a lot of the times the venues already have kind of like some of that they want. And as how hard is it to approach people and how have I gotten like uh, different celebrities on my show? Instagram. <laughs> so crazily enough, a lot of influencers manage their own Instagram accounts. Uh, it's very easy to reach out to influencers uh, almost in any space and say, so uh, let me go through an exercise. Let's say I were to uh, uh, call up Michelle Obama. Uh, I, and, and, and I was going to sell her something. I was going to sell her, I don't know, faucets, right? Um, I don't know. Uh, if I got through to her and I said, hey, Michelle, I'm with Delta Faucets and, and we've got our new line of click, like, it, it, there's no reason for her to talk to me. If I were to call her up and say, hey, Michelle, uh, I'm the host of a podcast, the Dead on the Vine podcast. Uh, would you like to come be a guest on our podcast? She might ask me, well, what would we talk about? And I would say, whatever you want to talk about. Right? So giving her a podium to speak on a subject that she's passionate about, well, now there's a high likelihood of her showing up. Right? Now, if I called up the venue and said, I got Michelle Obama, they're going to pay for that. So cost? Not even on me. I've never paid for a guest. Uh, now, I've had venues fork out dough to put them up in five-star hotels and flights and their crew and just friends sometimes and all the picking up from the airport and dinners and all that stuff. Never a dime out of the podcast. I'm, I'm the DJ. I'm the entertainment. So I've never paid for a guest, and yet I've had like crazy celebrities on the show. That's how the value proposition is that you're giving a podium. So, for example, if I want to start my new podcast and I'm very passionate about something, I can follow as many people, they don't care, they just do it very constantly and sometimes it takes like more than two or three years so that people really start liking you. Is, is that normal or there's like a strategy to follow? Is for waiting too much time is like, uh, it's too much? What is the subject that you're passionate about? I am a psychic medium. So what I do, I read energy. So I love that, but I haven't done a podcast because I don't know where to start. 
it's kind of when I see the people and when I talk with the people. So I don't have like an outline to follow. So I know that my topic, you know, there are many people interested, but I have don't know how to start. I don't know. So this one will be tough. This is a tougher one for me to, because I don't know a venue that would benefit from it. Um, but okay, so uh, Crystal Shop. Uh, so now I'm going to pan out and say this is health and wellness. Right now, in the health and wellness space, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of venues that would have an intrinsic value to having people come to their retail location or to their store or some sort of event that they could host. So what you want to find is you want to find that greater market and then a venue that's going to be able to pay for it. Otherwise, it will be on you to kind of be, now that's going to be a, a tough road. You're going to have to have some amazing personality, some weird spin on your industry. But if you can find a venue that is willing to host these events, then right away, that's where, um, as far as, um, because your question was more about, um, what was it? So, and, and basically the strategy that I've learned is that I'm, using those venues customers i'm yeah so i don't need to have a a uh an audience i don't need to have thirty thousand people following me i need a venue that has intrinsic value in having this event at their location so so with that in mind it's not really i will kind of touch on because you did mention like like what would you need to say so, are you guys familiar with Jimmy Fallon? Tonight show? Okay. Um, Likeable guy. Everybody kind of liked Jimmy Fallon. It's pretty funny. Um, do you know what he does during the day? He's never in the headlines for anything. Justin Timberlake, who's like his, his bestie, was, was just in the headlines. But you never see Jimmy Fallon in the headlines. But we all kind of like him, right? As a host of a show... Jimmy has guests on. We tune in for the guests. We don't tune in for Jimmy. As far as being an expert, um, I would say there's the expert who wants to tell you all the things that they know. I know so many things about my space, so people are going to listen to me. Or Jimmy Fallon has a crazy network of people, right? Uh, he uses his expertise He'll, he'll do little sing-along skits and stuff and he's he's talented but he he uses that to extract content and activity from his guests so as a podcast host i would say uh, how about joe rogan you guys listen to joe rogan if you watch his episodes if you he doesn't say much he'll ask a question and it's the guest who does all the talking Joe Rogan and a good host, um, any good host, will use the knowledge that they have to ask the right questions, not say all the things. So as a podcast host, you'll find that some of your more successful ones, unless it's a solo podcast where you're just looking at me and you're tuning, tuning in for me. Ty Lopez does a lot of like, look at me. I, I've got all the knowledge. I'm going to teach you how to do these things. But if you see like the really successful podcast hosts or hosts in general, they use their knowledge to ask the right questions of their their guests because it's the guests that brings the network and people tune in for the variety of guests. That's what positions you well to be able to book those different guests on your show. After season one of these, you'll find that those other guests are like, oh, this is a podium for me. So, uh, any other questions? This point in time, what does your production crew look like? I mean, obviously you're not a one-trick pony anymore, a one-man show. So what does your actual production crew um, look like? That phone right there. So it actually is me. So, so I use uh, AI to write all of our sponsorship scripts. Uh, I use Eleven Labs to do all the voiceovers, 
brought to you by blah 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 blah. That's all open. Uh, that's all um, eleven labs. So I'm just using the AI to create all the bumpers. Um, I record on Zoom or my phone like this. So we're recording right now. So I can take this. I can then chop it into. I bring I bring that into Kind Master. Kind Master is an app. So I do all my editing on a cell phone or tablet. Um, I throw in. Uh, with the sponsors, we have them put in like commercials, so they can send over 30-second video clips. So at my Design Talk Live podcast, when I have guests on, uh, we start out with, why are you passionate about this subject? We use a sound clip of them saying why they're passionate about it. Then we go into all the intros. And then I have a voiceover that says, and your host, Joseph Hecker. And so then we have some theme music, and then it cuts to me. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on the Design Talk Live podcast. Today I'm here with blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, can you start out by sharing a little bit about you and what you do? So the first section is background information, because my listeners may not know them. They got a little teaser of what they're going to get out of that little passion sound clip. Now we don't actually address that right away. We get into background. And then we say, hey guys, uh, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about you know, why he or she is so passionate about this topic and where that came from. We'll be right back. We come back from the commercial break. Hey guys, thanks for uh, sticking with us. You know, uh, we're here with blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, now, so why is it that you're passionate about this? For the second commercial break, hey guys, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to find out why, where this is headed and how you can get a hold of them. That's it. Are these your commercials? Or are these um, paid ads by the, the network, wherever you're live streaming or wherever your distribution is? So these are paid ads. Uh, if you go to my Design Talk Live page on my Joseph Hacker website, you'll see that my starting package is 12,500. Uh, 12, yeah, they send me a 30 second clip. Yeah, yeah, I don't do anything. No, no, I, 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 I'll, I'll bleep this out, but. Although for the 21,000, they get six on-site visits of which travel accommodations and guest is not included. So I pay nothing. That 21000 is fully mine. Uh, kind Master costs $40 a year. Uh, that fo cell phone isn't even activated. Uh, no, my entire podcast and, and no crew. There's no, no crew necessary. This is what we're working with. Uh, and I could do two cameras and have a two camera shoot if I want to do something really, yeah, fancy, yeah. So no, super budget. So for all the podcasters that are out there just racking up equipment, it is ridiculous. They've been sold on like, you know, by all the, all, hey, and, and I use Ceremonic, I'll, I'll give you my Amazon affiliate link for that. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it is nothing in comparison to what you'll pay if you go the, the typical route. So, hearing the numbers was good. So, are you earning twelve five to twenty one thousand per podcast episode, or multiple? Okay, got it. Uh, what would be your fee to someone like I just don't have the bandwidth, right? But the content is really valuable for what I'm up to. So, do you set businesses up with creating your own podcast and training someone to do it? Um, and lastly. I have a real issue with influencers with no knowledge, no insight, right, trying to become experts. How, because people rely upon what they're, you know, what they're preaching, what they're sharing. How important is it to use ChatGPT to create a book? You know, because that's a classic formula. Publish a book, you say you're published, right, host a mastermind, host a podcast, but so much of it starts with that shitty book, you know? So how, how critical is that to your formula? So as far as um, ChatGPT and the book, so um, I've got I've got 26 books published on Amazon, 
And when I first started out with this, I thought, um, yeah, I'm winning. <laughs> this is this is easy. Like I, I actually started out with kids' books. Um, and then I published my first two books. And then when I published my first two books, I started posting workshops on how to publish. Um, on my third workshop, I had these two people that showed up to the workshop. It was a Zoom, virtual Zoom workshop on how to get published on Amazon using ChatGPT. And, I, and normally when I go around, we first start out, we say like, so why is it that you're wanting to publish a book, right? And people will say, oh, I'm looking to build my brand authority or I'm looking to monetize or both, right? These two, eh, kind of quiet. You got all the way to the end of the workshop and the one guy raises his hand and he says, um, I'll share why I was here. He's like, so I'm a copyright attorney. And I showed up to, uh, to see what the devil was doing, right? And, uh, and the other guy then goes, you know what, I'll, I'll be honest too. I showed up, uh, I'm a, a publicist. I, I actually publish real books, which is a little offensive. Uh, and and I, he was like, and I showed up to find out what the devil was doing too. Um, so uh, now Todd, the uh, copyright attorney, does all of my copyright uh, uh, um, submissions and and uh, my copy yeah so so all of my books go through him now uh, and what he found was the process so uh, maybe for a different talk or for after but essentially with ChatGPT I pull in a bunch of reference material and then I give my own spin and then I have ChatGPT write an outline based off of all the reference material and my own spin and then I have it write an outline. And then I take that outline into Word, and then I then craft it to how I want it. So it's not. Um, uh, that was, if I was going into wine, reinventing myself. Um, let's say I'm, I'm uh, you know, semi-retired, I, I, I've been in my career. Me, I designed uh, light fixtures for hotels and casinos. So if you guys have, have you guys been to Vegas? Nobody? Oh. Uh, I've designed two of the world's largest chandeliers. So uh, I already had some street credit as far as the design industry went. When it came to the design industry, I, uh, so I even have my podcast logo tattooed on my arm with my first episode, Fuck the Trends, tattooed on my wrist. So uh, I was already in the design space. But now, n nobody prior to the talk show uh, needed to know who the guy in the engineering department at the light fixture company at the, from the casino, nobody, nobody knows who Joseph Hecker is, the lighting designer. It was really the podcast that, um, I mean, in 2018, my one hour a week show cleared 3.2 million views. So uh, you, you will, if you use the formula that I had to discover, and you reach out to a local venue and you say, hey, I can host this event. And because you have a podcast and a venue, you can reach out to influencers and say, hey, uh, I've got this event coming up. I'd like you to be a guest on my podcast in front of a live studio audience, right? So that right there will get you in front of that audience. And if you realize that you're Jimmy Fallon, that your job is to ask good questions, then you're associated with those influencers. So if I did go into the wine space, I would be associated as a knowledge base because of the people that I hang out with, because of the the guests that I have on my show, right? So I would become a de facto authority. Now, am I an authority? I don't know, you know? But I know the people who are. Uh, I, yeah, I can't even taste it, but yeah. <laughs> well, I, is, are we about time? Yeah, okay. Okay, well, if you guys have any questions, uh, so uh, what will make me unique is I have nothing to sell you guys. So if you guys just want the if, to talk, and like learn about the blueprint on how I've done it. I'll tell you, um, I speak at PodCon, I speak at Podcast Movement, uh, and and man, it's not that hard, uh, 
But it is a different approach than what I think everybody is told. And and if if events is a struggle for you, then it, this blueprint might not work. But if you wanted to monetize a podcast, the intrinsic value is those venues that want to be able to host and have people show up to their space. If you understand that and you understand that your your job is to leverage your knowledge as a host to ask the right questions, then you can create a profitable uh, podcast with very little equipment and uh, and it's very manageable that way so that you know, you're not one of the 95% that doesn't fail. You actually are in the very smaller percentage that not only succeed, but monetize. Yeah. Thank you, Philip, for, for hosting this. These are amazing. And thanks for uh, Elementos, for Elementos, for hosting us at the venue. Just an incredible venue. And great photographer right there. Yeah. Want to do a closing anything? No? Thanks everybody for coming out and uh, enjoy your two for one drinks. Look mom, I made that.